This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Saturday, March the 23rd, 2019. It's the feast day of St. Toribio Alfonso de Mogrovejo, who was the Archbishop of Lima in Peru from 1579 until he died today in 1606. From 1571 to 1576, he was the Grand Inquisitor of the Spanish Inquisition, which is sadly understood without any nuance at all nowadays. And so an incredibly complicated centuries-long event, which was misused for evil by latter kings, is sadly painted with a single broad stroke of judgment. In fact, Toribio was appointed specifically to make sure abuses were prevented and abusers were brought to justice. As the Inquisition at that time was as much about the crown as it was the cross, Toribio arguably became the second most powerful man in Spain. Because of his judgment and his fairness, he was appointed to the gigantic Archdiocese of Lima in Spanish Peru. It was one extreme to the other. He went from one of the most challenging desk jobs in world history to one of the most challenging pastoral jobs in world history. And it's worth noting that he wasn't a priest while he was working for the Inquisition. He was ordained two years later after leaving his post as Grand Inquisitor and named Archbishop of Lima only two years after his ordination. He turned out to be a brilliant preacher who wasn't afraid of hard work and muddy donkey rides into mountain villages. He personally instructed, and he may have even baptized, St. Martin de Porres and St. Rose of Lima. He was given a vision of the exact moment of his death, which he reported to an assistant, and it turned out that vision was accurate. He died in Sanya on Holy Thursday, 3.30 in the afternoon. His last words were the words of Jesus from the cross. Lord, into thy hands I commend my spirit. A hundred years later, a thousand miles north in 1775, Patrick Henry of Virginia was speaking at St. John's Episcopal Church in Richmond, Virginia. He was debating the language of a request for royal recognition of a local militia. He had these words to say. If we were base enough to desire it, it is now too late to retire from the contest. There is no retreat but in submission and slavery. Our chains are forged. Their clanking may be heard on the plains of Boston. The war is inevitable and let it come. I repeat, sir, let it come. It is vain, sir, to extenuate the matter. Gentlemen may cry, peace, peace, but there is no peace. The war is actually begun. The next gale that sweeps from the north will bring to our ears the clash of resounding arms. Our brethren are already in the field. Why stand here idle? What is it that gentlemen wish? What would they have? Is life so dear or peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Forbid it, Almighty God. I know not what course others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. Fifteen months later, Henry's writing and work in Virginia would be highly influential to another Virginian, who drafted a Declaration of Independence for the formerly British colonies of North America. And today in 1933, on the other side of the pond, another war was looming. It was today in Berlin at the Kroll Opera House that the Reichstag of the Weimar Republic passed an enabling act, unofficially titled, A Law to Remedy the Distress of People and Reich. The text of the Enabling Act appointed Herr Adolf Hitler to the newly established position of dictator of Germany. Hitler would go on to terrorize his own people and most of the world for the next 12 years. He'd be remembered as one of the most vile men in history. He'd be responsible for the death of millions of Jews, Romani, Catholic priests, and political dissidents. Adolf Hitler will go down as one of the worst men in world history, and he was given the reins of power in Germany today. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.